So I'm finally getting to my Scuf Reflex FPS unboxing and actual review. So with that being said, this is a pre-configured model that they were selling earlier in uh, 2022. And I finally got my hands on one. I've been dealing with some construction things in my studio, so now I'm finally able to get to that. The good thing about my construction experience is that I had a lot of time uh, with this controller and I can give you my thoughts and a full review. Right off the rip, you can see that the Scuf's unboxing experience is second to none. They literally are the best when it comes to uh, the, the packaging and the whole experience as a whole. Uh, this is the FPS right out of the box. This is the pre-build option. So I'm gonna put this off to the side and let's see what else comes in the packaging. And you can see that the thumbsticks were held in place with this foam. That's great. And there's a bunch of other stuff underneath this part of the package. Uh, there's an accessory box and then uh, the manual on how to safely use your controller. Anyways, this shows you how to remap and whatnot, but we'll talk about that here in this video. Getting into the accessories box, you can see um, there's, it's loosely packaged. So you get two replacement thumbsticks that are not of the same uh, build type as what is installed on the controller. As you can see, these are both convex and are of different lengths. So that's what you get. Additionally, you get a sweet USB type A to USB type C cable. This braided cable is one of the highest quality cables that, that I've held in my hands. This is really well constructed and well built. This cable is about six feet in length. That does it for the unboxing experience and what's included. Let's take a quick look at the build quality of this controller. The first thing that you're going to notice as you pick this controller up, if you've never had a custom, you know, professional grade controller is its weight. The Scuf Reflex FPS has no rumbles installed and that's part of its design, as well as uh, hair triggers on the bumpers and triggers. So this is a really light controller and it's really comfortable to hold. Uh, this is about eight ounces in comparison to what you would experience on the OEM controller by Sony. This is roughly 10 ounces in weight and you can definitely feel the difference in weight between the two. Moving along, let's talk about the directional pad. This is just a standard directional pad. It's not separate buttons and they're not clicky by any means. They are clear by design uh, with the backfill red there. Uh, same with the share and options buttons. They're not of any special build or anything like that. They're just black. And then there's like this matte finish across the face plate of it all. So this red has the same finish as what's on this black. I have noticed that the black holds a lot more fingerprints than what you would notice on the red in this build. Same with the action buttons here. It is clear with a backfill red. I really like the color scheme with this pre-built controller. I would have preferred to customize the build, but at the time of my order with this controller, it was not available. Keeping this video moving, you can see uh, Scuff went with a custom home button with a home uh, indicator on it. I really prefer this because it gives you more of a nostalgic feel based on the dual shock four uh, controllers that Sony made. I am not a fan of their choice here with the logo. I, do, I just don't like it. Um, it's just a personal preference thing. Uh, Scuff did a better job at uh, creating their own. Um, right below that is the mute microphone uh, LED button indicator. So you get a quick notification or a visual indication of if your microphone is muted. And then you get the thumbsticks. These feel absolutely fantastic. These are some of my favorite, if not the favorite thumbsticks on any custom or professional controller. I'm a real big fan on uh, the OEM controllers. I like this thumbstick design and its length is perfect for me. Um, as you can see, they did a good job at kind of keeping it close. I just prefer this length of thumbstick. This is close enough. I haven't had any issues with uh, build quality or rubbing off or anything like that. Even with a little bit of moisture, these things uh, hold and have a lot of uh, feeling towards them to where you're not slipping off. I will say that the OEM uh, thumbsticks, they're not as forgiving as the scuff controller when it gets a little bit of moisture or sweat there. Uh, you have to wipe that off to get you know that grip return to that. That is not the case with the Scuf Reflex FPS or this thumbstick design that they went through. Another thing about the Scuf Reflex and its thumbsticks is that they're readily replaceable and easy to do so with just your fingers. You don't need any special tools or spudgers or anything like that. You just pull this face plate off, this bottom face trim, and it's easy to do. And then you can remove the thumbstick 
and you can see the thumbstick mechanism below there and then replace it with whatever you'd like. That helps with keeping it clean and whatnot because uh, you know, with drift and everything being a problem with this thumbstick design, because it's not any of the manufacturer's fault, it's just the, the manufacturer of the actual thumbstick module where it comes to drift becoming a problem. You can get in there and clean that out to help improve that if that's a, an issue. I will say that I have had no issues with drift with this controller in the past six months that I've owned this thing and, and in playing with it, it's just it's a great feeling controller. Um, you can remove both, take a closer look at the modules within in there, and then if you wanted to, you could put the, you know, those longer ones that came in the accessories kit, and you just press it down. Let's put back on the OEM or the one that was pre-installed, and then I'll give you a look at how easy this is to do. One thing that I will note with the trim is that you can replace these little rings around as well, uh, these anti-friction rings. So if you start to get wear and tear here, as well as in the thumbstick, you can just purchase from the accessory site on Scuff, new thumbstick rings and new thumbsticks. So with this uh, lower trim, you just take it and put it in at an angle on the sticks, slide it in, and then it's easily clicked and installed. And that's basically it. So here you can see that longer thumbstick that's convex and the regular one that was installed. One last thing with the thumbsticks, uh, the tension feels a little bit less than what you would experience on the OEM and I think that's due to the length of the thumbstick that is installed on this. To provide you guys with more of an official number on the thumbstick tension, I have this trigger gauge that you use to kind of uh, dial in your triggers on your weapons to give you a less of an arbitrary number instead of me just saying, oh, it's, it's less or, you know, it feels kind of the same. Let's see if we can get... That's a 2.1 ounce. Let's go ahead and see if we can do that again. 2.4 ounces. Let's do a third one just to 2.4 ounces. So on this thumbstick, you get 2.4 ounces of tension and that's me just pulling down. So keep that in mind. This is no way of me scientifically testing this. It's just a way to kind of give you a number to what it is that I'm stating there. 2.5 ounces. Let's do three of them. 2.1 ounces. 2.3 ounces. And uh, it, so about two, 2.1 to 2.4 ounces of pull on these thumbsticks. Here I have the OEM. Let's get this one, get this one a test to see if there's any difference. 2.6 ounces. 2.6 ounces. 2.8 ounces. Let's give this one a try. 2.8 ounces. 2.6 ounces, 2.7 ounces. So the differences between the thumbstick tension on the OEM and the Scuff Reflex FPS is that I think it boils down to the length of the thumbstick. They feel the same. It just takes a little bit less effort to move these around. So take that for what it is. It's not scientific by any means. It's just giving a number to how the thumbstick tension is on or in between these two, if you're considering. Okay, so getting to the back of the controller and the first thing I wanna talk about that had really stuck out to me is the grips. This is by far the best professional grip on any controller maker or any controller out there. Um, this is my favorite. It just feels so good and it just wipes away any kind of moisture, any kind of grip issues that you would have with the controller. It just feels so freaking good. This design as well as its implementation because it, it just feels great in the hand. The next thing is that you're gonna see the back paddle module and it comes with three different profiles. These are all removable and the way that you do that is that you gotta pull these two out and they all come down. So these two inner ones come out first. Let's see if I can get it on camera. It's a rather scary thing to do, but it's easy to do as soon as you do it one time. As you can see, that one comes out. So if you don't wanna use all four of them, uh, you can easily customize your controller further in a physical form. And that's one thing that Scuff has in its availability of products, because you can customize the stick uh, orientation. If you just wanted one, you could take it out as well. So if you just wanted one on one side, you could just have it. And then there you go, there's that one extra controller. And they took it a step further with allowing you to change out the thumbsticks. You can see that these are pretty easily replaced and taken apart. Sometimes they get stuck and they're kind of hard to get out. Don't be afraid to pull on them, just don't pull on them too hard to where you're worried about damaging the controller. You can wiggle these, these out and they will eventually come out. So taking a closer look at the back with the paddles removed, you can see that there's these button actuations here. 
So these are all the custom buttons. This is just the module by which the paddles are held in place. I like this implementation because uh, it allows you to swap out the paddles if necessary or if needed. The bad part about it is, is that if any of these fail on you in any way, shape or form, then that's pretty much lost. It's a lost cause. You might have to send it in for service. So to reinstall the paddles, it's, it's as simple as it was. It's probably more simple than uh, to put back in than uh, take out. So you gotta put the furthest ones out, or the outboard ones out in first. That makes sense. So just click them into place and take the inner one in. Put it in place and then do the same with the other side. Take the furthest outboard ones and then replace them first. And then the inner one, the innermost one. So that does it for the paddle design and how they can be removed and taken out. And they also come with labels to help you keep them organized because I don't know, it's a little, they look a little weird when they're not installed. Looking towards the bottom here, you can see the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack as well as the dock touch points. The good thing about the Reflex FPS is that if you have a DualSense charger or an OEM DualSense charger by Sony, this thing fits nicely and will charge your controller just fine. Fits in place, the rear module doesn't get in its way or anything like that, so uh, that is a nice touch. Some custom controllers do not fit on this uh, docking station for charging, so just know that the Scuf Reflex FPS and all of the Scuf Reflex actually fit on uh, that OEM charger. Moving up to the bumpers and triggers, they are all built with and have designed in a clicky mechanism within them. So there is zero travel and instant feedback and instant recognition. So uh, the response time for FPS games, which is in the name for the Scuf Reflex FPS, is near zero. So for quick comparison, you can see the adaptive triggers have a lot of travel. Uh, that's a good thing for, you know, Sony PlayStation 5 games because a lot of them have taken or have or are going to use the adaptive triggers for, you know, in-game in actions. And this allows you to play racing games, you know, have adjusts on the throttle and the gas and all types of stuff. This is, this is perfect for that. And this is not. This is straight for FPS. I wouldn't recommend this FPS controller to anyone that doesn't play, you know, first person shooters primarily as they're gaming. I would go with the Scuf Reflex Pro because that still has the adaptive trigger mechanism and all of this nice uh, addition with the back buttons profiles and uh, customization as well as the thumbstick stuff. As you can see, the bumpers have a lot more travel than what are on the Scuf uh, Reflex FPS as well. Uh, this mechanism in the controller is the selling point for me and it's weight. This thing feels freaking fantastic in the hands and it allows me to play the games that I enjoy playing at a higher level or a little bit more competitive level than, than would be just a casual gamer. Taking a look at it one more time, you can see that this has a lot of travel. This has no travel. Same with the bumpers. A little bit more travel, no travel. Taking a quick listen, Okay, so that about does it for the physical tour of this controller and all of its features and its capabilities and whatnot. So let's talk about reprogramming uh, the buttons to the back as well as using different profiles. So when this thing is on, you can switch between different profiles. So there's a red profile, a green profile, and a blue profile. And the way that you customize this thing is that you hold the profile button down for about two seconds. It goes into blinking mode, ready to take in your input. Hold down the, the paddle that you want to customize, so say this one, and then press the button on the front, let go of the button on the front, and let go of the button on the back, and then it has been registered to this. And then you hold it down again and for it to record that action or that customization to that trigger. Uh, it's not doing it here on camera right now because I have my PlayStation 5 disconnected. I don't want to accidentally do anything on my PlayStation while I'm filming this video. So for customization, you can do all of the directional buttons, the action buttons, L3, R3, and the bumpers and triggers on the back of this, and then you can switch between the profiles and have different setups there as well. So they're not only allowing you to do things to the, or do limited things to the physical build of this controller by uh, allowing you to swap out the thumbsticks on, at any given time, as well as kind of build around or do what it is you'd like for the paddle layout. It's because you can use one, three or four if you'd like. You can use them in any orientation. So the Scuf Reflex, it really is a custom controller that allows you to build the controller that you would like 
at a reasonable cost, I would say. Uh, right now, this thing, this pre-built, uh, comes in at uh, 280, I think. And then if you wanted to do anything to it, it's, it's good. it just goes up from there. The customizer is now available to you, so you can completely trick this thing out as you would like. But the cost goes up real quick from there because it starts at 260, and then you start adding, you know, custom faceplate and uh, the trim and thumbsticks and color and all that type of stuff. The price can go up exponentially quick on you pretty fast. Before I close, I don't have anything to disclose because I bought this thing with my own hard-earned cash and through your support here on this channel by you know watching, liking, sharing, all that type of stuff, as well as shopping through my affiliate links down below. Uh, as you do shop through those, so full disclosure with that, I do get a little bit of commission based off your purchases through those links uh, without it costing you anything in addition. It's just a really nice way for you to support content creation here on this channel. So if you do that, thank you so much. Well, that about does it for me in this one. If you enjoyed this video, please feel free to give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, you know what to do. Thanks for taking the time to watch. I'm Tomas and I'll catch you in the next one.